Hi, and welcome to another episode of Live Photography with Mr. John. So today um, we're going to go over some ideas that you can do at home. Now, the ideas that I got from this are actually from an article from photographytalk.com. Um, it was done February 3rd, 2021. The article is called 12 Photo Projects You Can Do From Home During the COVID-19 Pandemic. So let's get right into these ideas. All right, so starting with number one, we have food photography. Now, this is something that I've suggested a couple of times, um, and it can make some really interesting photography. Um, you can learn how to place food um, differently, um, work on presentation of food, and then work on lighting and other different aspects of this. Now, it doesn't have to be already cooked food. It can be food elements, like maybe vegetables or something. Um, it could be candies. It can be whatever you want, whatever you can manipulate and kind of arrange in a really interesting way. Um, food is a great example and a great subject matter for this. Coming in at number two, we have uh, photography that's done using the alphabet. Now, there's a couple different ways you can take this. Um, in this example, the way it was taken was that all the photos that we see here kind of resemble different letters of the alphabet. So we can see A, B, C, D going across the top, um, and all these different items kind of look like those letters of the alphabet. The other way you can do this is to try to find items or specific subjects that start with the letters of um, the alphabet as well. So A for apple, B for banana, and so forth. So you have a couple different options here, but either way, it'll get you um, thinking more creatively about how to proceed with uh, taking photos. So the third thing that we have here is practicing black and white photography. So a lot of the time, especially if we're using phones, um, we just kind of pull out the phone. Um, we might change a couple little settings here, but we should consider actually practicing black and white photography because you can get some really interesting results. You can get some very timeless looking results and um, it helps you focus a little bit less on color and a little bit more on contrast and composition. So definitely an interesting thing to try. Number four is using oil and water to make interesting designs. Um, these will kind of look very abstract as we see in the example here. Um, if you just use water and oil, um, you'll get um, very plain looking photos. Um, you can probably backlight them to get some more interest. Uh, in this example, it looks like they used either uh, a colorful screensaver or like a monitor behind it, or you could even um, print out some like colorful designs and put them behind the oil in the water in a maybe a glass dish. Um, I've actually covered this in a past video, but I just thought it was great to revisit and you'll get some really interesting abstract results. Now, number five is simply going online and looking up a photo scavenger hunt of some sort. And there are tons of these. Um, this one offers 72 different things that you can take photos of. And there's some that are smaller. There's some that are probably even larger than this. Um, and they'll give you a wide range of different subject matter, um, maybe even different ways of taking the photo uh, to keep things more interesting and kind of keep you in practice. Number six brings us to water again, uh, this time without the oil. Um, but you can do a, a lot of different water-based photography, maybe even fo focusing on droplets or maybe just running water, maybe um, doing different shutter speeds to see if you can get motion or to freeze frame different um, water sources, like a sink or something. Um, but you can get a lot of cool results like this. And you can even add some food dye to the water to get some different colors um, so it doesn't look uh, too plain. Um, but even just using plain water, like we can see here, you can get some really cool results. Number seven has us practicing uh, different forms of depth of field. Uh, in this case, um, they focus on shallow depth of field where your subject matter is nice, clear, um, all details are made out and the background is kind of blurred out. So your eye just wanders to that focal point or that subject matter. Um, you can practice the reverse of this by having um, a much higher depth of field where everything is clear, um, but this is a good time to practice these things and um, try to get better at it. It's especially good because um, with some phones, it might take some um, research or some fiddling around to try to figure out how to actually get depth of field or um, background blurring in your photos using a cell phone. So for number eight, um, a great thing to do is to actually experiment with different lenses. 
Um, more importantly, even using the wrong lens, um, quote unquote, for certain projects. So I know there's um, some detachable lenses that can actually go over cell phones. Um, if you're actually using a camera, maybe you have a, a couple, like maybe a telescopic or your standard um, lens in there. But you can experiment with this. Um, try different things. Try fisheye. Try wide angle. Whatever you want to try. And even if it doesn't seem appropriate to use a, a fisheye lens when you're taking a picture of flowers or if you're taking a picture of someone, try it anyway. You might get some interesting results. Now, number nine has us visiting one of my favorite forms of photography, and that is close-up photography um, or macro photography. And what you're doing is you're really focusing in on something and really pulling out all the details of something. Um, it could be something really tiny or it could be something really large, like uh, even cloth or fabric, and getting really close and getting all those subtle details that you might not normally notice or see um, with the naked eye. So macro photography or really close up photography, really interesting photos come out of this. Now for number 10, um, number 10 asks us to kind of step back and think more um, minimalistically. And what that means is, is maybe only having one color or a very um, blank background and just having one single object or one simple object in there. Um, so we can see in the example here, we have a pedestal and a wall and they're almost kind of blended together because they're so close in light. And you can really focus in on this little uh, vase of water and these uh, two little uh, plant leaves sticking out of it. And you can use different subject matter. It doesn't have to be plants. Um, it could be just everyday objects. But keeping them on a very simple background, keeping everything very simple um, is the point of minimalistic photography um, to create interest in just minimalization. For number 11, um, we go to low light photography. So maybe very, very dimly lit rooms or using very dim light sources like candles, um, trying to turn off all the lights, using very dim light to add more interest and um, bring out certain subject matters. Um, we can see in this example here, we have this girl kind of looking into like a paper lantern and maybe there's a couple little dim lights in the background. Um, but for the most part, this photography will be very dark um, and it'll kind of encourage you to kind of work on um, getting a better light balance when you take these photos. So again, you can get some really interesting photos using low light photography. And finally, at number 12, we have taking photos of the mundane. Now, what this means is, is that you can try to take pictures of everyday activities or everyday places and try to make them look more interesting than they actually are. Now we have some locations here. We have a, an interior with a little stairwell and some doorways and some furniture. Um, we have what looks like a, a street and um, some wall in the background and some interesting slide that's kind of poking off of that into the road. I don't know why. Um, maybe that's not as mundane as it looks. But the point is, is just trying to capture everyday life uh, for what it is and using your skills as a photographer to make it look more interesting. And this could be even um, indoor activities like baking um, or sewing or doing something. It can be different rooms in your house. So taking pictures of the mundane um, can actually be very effective because we can all relate to it at some level. And you might find a different way of presenting it that might be interesting. So there you have it. There's um, some projects that you can do while you're at home, uh, especially during this pandemic. Um, and just keep you in practice for taking photos and maybe get you more interested in trying to figure out um, certain things to take photos. Uh, I know um, for myself, trying to get motivated or trying to find um, some idea for what to do artistically can be tough at times. So having some little examples like this or looking up certain things of as to ideas can really be helpful. It can really kind of inspire you that you pass artist block or writer's block or photography block or whatever kind of block that you're kind of suffering right now. So if none of these were interesting to you, look online. There's definitely um, a whole bunch of different articles and different websites that you can go to that have a lot of creative ideas uh, to kind of inspire you. So I hope you do enjoy this. Um, I hope you get to try some of these or if not these, maybe you look up some and get to try those. Um, I hope you learned something from this. And until next time, take care.